Hello everybody, Dokkan Assets here. Today we are back with another animation analysis video. And ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be taking a look at the big bad boy himself, AGL Super Saiyan Blue Gogeta, the original Dragon Ball Super Broly big kahuna gogeta unit obviously with broly and gogeta both getting their easy a's i figured this was a good a time as any to take a look back at their animations from way back in the day now before we get into these videos i have a little bit of a introduction for you if you did watch the broly video by the way it's basically going to be the same thing so you can skip ahead or you know you can watch the video give me some more watch time you know your boy would really appreciate that thank you so much <laughs> for one as per usual with these animation analysis videos i of course am not a professional animator or anything like that i just look at dokkan assets all the time i know how these animations are put together and how they work in the back end and i would like to think from watching so many of these and obviously just having a good idea overall about how these animations look and work and what good ones look like i think i can give my little critiques as to these animations the other thing that i want you to keep in mind for this one is of course we are not going to be looking at this with the same lens as we do the modern day animations of course with those we are a lot more critical and a lot more you know nitpicky with the brand new stuff because of course you know we expect the highest quality from the brand new stuff but obviously back then when this unit came out way back in 2018 can you believe it's been that long because i sure can't <laughs> of course the quality of the animations was not as it is today right we didn't have the extreme anime accuracy obviously their technology was not as far along as it was of course they didn't have as much practice with the engine and all of that good stuff as in like the game's engine right so of course you know with these animations being a little bit older we need to keep that in mind now as per usual when it comes to taking a look at older animations i always like to take a look at the date of this guy being the agl metal cooler a lot of people kind of regard this guy as the first unit to have the really really good animations that dokkan is known for and this guy came out on october 1st 20 or october 1st i can't read i'm a dragon ball fan bro <laughs> october 31st 2018 on halloween and as you can see of course a couple months later the boy gogeta came out the same year so these guys are pretty much like around the same time in terms of the animation quality and i gotta say going from coolers who was still very good for the time and is still pretty good to this day to gogeta's is pretty insane to be honest with you the jump because even though this guy's animations are certainly pretty old they are still pretty good by today's standards i would say so of course as per usual we're gonna watch these bad boys in the regular speed and then we will go through and take a look at them now i think that gogeta's funny enough besides this part right with the blue beams firing down right i always thought that broly's super attack was a little bit better to be honest gogeta's is a lot more like png usage whereas broly i think they make use of the animation and you know the angles and stuff for the time and kind of make it look a little bit cooler but it is still really cool to see and gogeta's animation is also super sick but with this one oh man i remember when i saw this back in the day and don't get me wrong i still like the super saiyan gogeta animation but for the time that these came out, this was insane. Especially this section right here. Like, holy cow, bro. Look at that. You told me that's 2018, Dokkan. What? That's crazy, bro. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, we do actually have for this video, because obviously these animations are a little bit older, we do have the Dokkan versus anime comparisons by the boy Giad, which we are going to be using as our kind of main comparison for this video. Of course, link in the description to the boy's channel and of course this video. Definitely go check it out. He does content just like this where he looks at the comparisons between these two and makes these. So they're really good. Um, I literally watch them like all the time. And I do want you to keep in mind as well, because this one is a little bit older, right? This one was uploaded, let's see, three years ago. Yeah, which probably is more like four years ago at this point. But YouTube's like dates on stuff is a little bit weird sometimes with like their estimates on the time. Um, they might not be a side to side in terms of the frames like the modern day ones are. And 
um, when, you know, they show the card art on the screen for the characters, right? He doesn't really, like, pause the animations in between. He just kind of lets it rock. So just keep that in mind as we are taking a look through these. Now, I will say... This part I always thought was really cool, where we have the sort of close-up of Gogeta there. Because obviously this isn't like completely how it is in the movie, right? Of course, you kind of have this power-up scene with Gogeta here, right? And it's not necessarily like... It's weird because like this is obviously supposed to be a reference to this. But I honestly really like that they sort of ad-libbed it by having this zoom in. I always thought that this was really cool. Very interesting to me that they also picked like this angle specifically. I always thought this was a little bit weird. It's not like just half of his face or something like that. It's kind of like this weird three or two of three quarters type of thing. Or wait, quarters. No, that would be two thirds shot rather. Sorry, I apparently can't do math either. I'm a One Piece fan too, I guess. So with this guy, right? With this shot, I really like the way that they sort of interpret this with this nice little zoom in. And then obviously they zoom back to sort of reference this shot here. And you have the boy fly forward like for this scene. It is interesting to see too. I feel like with Broly's animations, they tried to keep a lot more close to the original animations like angles as they could obviously in that video and definitely go check it out if you haven't seen it yet there were some things that of course they couldn't get accurate to the original or they kind of ad-libbed it but for this this is like a completely different angle right we have gogeta you know flying up towards broly here whereas for this one we have gogeta flying right towards the camera right with basically like this static png on the screen i will say the way that they do this though isn't too bad i like that they have the aura sort of move around on the dokkan version and obviously having the super motion line heavy gogeta is also a very nice way to sort of you know imply very quick movement but it's interesting to me the kind of difference between these scenes right so then, of course, we have the iconic kick to Broly. Now, I gotta tell you, I think, first of all, before I even talk about the kick thing, they absolute I don't know what they were doing in the studio the day that they made the backgrounds for these essays, but they're so impressive. I mean, like, Dokkan has always had pretty good backgrounds in terms of, you know, what it was like in the original source material. But, like, oh, man, this just looks so good, dude. Like, look at this. It is, you know, like, a super great interpretation of this. It's maybe not one-to-one, -one, but this, like, I'm like, yeah, okay, that's the Rolling movie when I look at this, right? So, for the kick, obviously, this scene is pretty iconic, right? Where he, you know, spins around and kicks Broly in the face. Obviously, this shot is a lot farther away in AGL Gogeta's version of this. And I'm sure that that's because they were not only, like, not as well versed in close-up shots as they are now, right? There are a couple of really good ones throughout this entire thing. But a lot of them are either, like, PNGs or just kind of quick pose changes between each other, right? I doubt that at the time they really had the know-how how to like properly animate this entire sequence with Gogeta spinning at such a high frame rate and then this you know like zoom in shot to Broly you know to then like hitting him down towards the ground I think if this was a more modern animation they definitely would have included that um but despite that I still do like this animation for what it did Obviously, they kind of try and do their own version of this, which I think is a pretty neat sort of take on it, right? Obviously, you have Gogeta zoom in because this is supposed to kind of be like this shot where he zooms in forward towards the camera, right? Then leading into this shot, which is why they have him sort of blurry, which is a cool way to transition between attacks. And obviously, Dokkan does this sometimes where they kind of combine scenes together and then they make it flow properly for the sake of the animation in the game, right? But I like the super blurry asset and you have Gogeta sort of, you know, come to a full stop here. And the way that they sort of implement the spin that Gogeta does here is they twist the asset and it's kind of hard to see because obviously Broly's aura is in the way unfortunately but they have him spin around the circle and they just blur him like crazy right you can see in the background my man is spinning like a Beyblade right let it rip up in here bro <laughs> and of course when he makes contact with the enemy right you can see that there is that little impact frame with him obviously having just kicked the enemy away essentially right and it is basically just a static PNG is there a little bit of leg movement on him I can't tell I don't 
maybe? It kind of looks like that there's less of his hand showing by the time that it gets to the end, but I think that's just sort of an optical illusion. Yeah, I think it's just that they're spinning the asset and it kind of makes it look like that. Obviously this impact effect, not the impact frame, but this is kind of basic. But I mean, you know, it's expected for the time that, you know, this came out. It is also interesting that once he does the spin, right, they actually have him like disappear almost, but I think it's just because that the aura is kind of covering him there. So he kicks the enemy down. Obviously, this close-up shot is not present, and you have the enemy fly towards the ground, which it is kind of a shame that they didn't have this little, like, smoke cloud, you know, that followed Broly in the original here, um, present on this version. But, I mean, I still like what they did here, and obviously they have the rocks kind of explode up, right? A little bit more dramatic, even, maybe, than, oh, well, no, I guess not, actually. They do cover the screen quite, you know, well in the, um really movie version yeah i i think too not only that like it's cool that they even reference like the way that the blocks look right like the way that the rocks are it's not one-to-one -one, of course but like the style and the shading on them you know it's very reminiscent of the broly movie style which is what i um was talking about actually in the broly video right saying broly so many times it's getting my tongue twisted i'm sorry <laughs> right I don't think that these are necessarily like as faithful in terms of the style as say something like str gogeta but of course you know they weren't as technologically advanced back then as they are now and i still think that they're a good representation of the source material nonetheless so with this one this is something that i was actually very keen to see so funny enough they just used the card art here right like this is just straight up the card art no kind animations did this more frequently back then where they kind of like just snuck in the card art a little bit obviously because it's like why remake the asset they already have it you know so obviously for this close-up shot though i mean this is a good way to do this because obviously it's kind of hard to tell that in the first place you know that it is just this twisted basically um but obviously right it's so close up to the camera that it's like you're not even going to notice you know that that's you know what that is right but they have him you know immediately lift his face up for the scream which funny enough is actually just um this asset that you're going to see close up in a minute right but they just kind of cut it off here so it looks a little bit different which i think is a great way to sort of frame this shot for a little bit of perspective right i think that's pretty cool you obviously have him pan past the camera and i really like the yellow glow that i have on him it's a lot more simplistic than the yellow glow that's on him in the movie and i think um with broly they kind of get it a little bit more with like the green sort of glow around him with the full power but this is still definitely pretty good and obviously this way they can just kind of make it a single png but they do have the way that it sort of forms right obviously you saw before that the way that it formed in his hand was there was this little this circle that came to his hands and they do actually reference that here with it then shooting out to the side and then sort of creating this kind of like dark blue effect that the gogeta movie attacks or gogeta movie <laughs> gogeta from the broly movie rather has attacks are known for and even so i really really like the like effects and the way that they kind of have the beams because they're a lot more dynamic than just your generic like oh straight kamehameha line circle in their hand you know it's a great reference to the gogeta i keep calling it the gogeta movie the broly movie's very dynamic key blast effects it's a very good reference to that for sure very very cool looking they even do have this angle which is pretty cool you can see here definitely with the aura right it's a lot more like uh, vibrant and dynamic rather than just kind of looking like Photoshop outer glow, but it still looks good and the background for this one I guess it would be more like just the ground um, Also looks very very good, too So then of course a reference to this shot, right? I think that if this shot was modernized here I think that it wouldn't just be this PNG on the screen even though this looks good right and I think that it looks cool and it gets the job done I think for you know if they were to redo this one for sure they would kind of have it be a little bit more of this crazy animation that they have from the Broly movie right rather than just kind of having him basically have the PNG zoom out and again like I said it gets the job done and even for this scene right that is basically what's happening here right where they just kind of like zoom out even though the Obi belt does move a little bit in that version and obviously again for Dokkan's version <laughs> here comes Gogeta <laughs> you know he's basically just sliding but I think it gets the job done and I do like that even though it does look a little bit silly this very like I don't know how you would describe it Gogeta's face in the movie kind of looks like he's powering up and it's so 
like much power that his face is like getting contorted and almost like flying upward and they kind of emulate that with this png for dokkan here too which is nice to see that little reference but yeah obviously the boy goes up to the sky and you have this which bro that is so impressive to me the actual like launch of the key there the little explosion effect out and then of course these wild key beams to shoot out you know you'll see literally here right that's exactly how it is in the movie I'm so impressed that they had that for this time. That is so cool that they were able to nail that. And even though, again, like, it's not the, exactly the same. It's a good representation of the source material, I feel, right? And of course, too, it's not going to be exact, especially for this time. But, you know, still. And this section I always thought looked really, really good. Um, a very faithful representation of this scene uh, where all of the key blasts are falling towards the Earth. I think these shots are so good. Um, funny enough, I almost like the Dokkan one of this better. I've always really liked this shot here. It's kind of hard to tell, too, if there's even a Gogeta asset there. Like, it kind of looks like there's a little speck there. But it is kind of hard to tell, because obviously he's so far away. I mean, it's also just sort of implied. Like, here you can't even really tell if he's there. Like, you can kind of see a little tiny speck, but this shot looks so amazing the way that they do it. And the way that they have the Key Blast fall, too, just looks so perfect, right? It, it Everything about that shot is just so good. <laughs> Then we obviously have the key blast hit the ground, which also looks fantastic and is basically one to one to the movie. Obviously, they don't have, you know, the shots where it's kind of smacking against Broly there, which makes sense. And that would also look really bad with the sprites, if I'm being honest with you. But they definitely do a good job of emulating this scene very, very well with the blast sort of crashing against the ground, even the rocks sort of shooting upright. That looks very, very good if I do say so myself. And then, of course, we have Gogeta flip around. Now, this always was a little bit unfortunate to me considering, like, how much I felt like Broly's kind of flowed pretty well. Even though it is, you know, Gogeta kind of spinning around here. Obviously, in the movie, he feels a lot more fluid in his movement. And even though I love the Key Blast in the Dokkan version, I absolutely adore them, in fact. I was always a little bit disappointed with this animation because, like... You know, he's just kind of flying back and they basically just fade between the assets with, you know, the PNG just sort of like flipping around, right? And then just kind of moving it around. Like it's pretty obvious to see, obviously, the movie version, you know, it's a lot more fluid. Whereas the Dokkan one, it is just kind of like, you know, the PNG basically just changing positions. But again, for the time that it came out, I can't really knock it. And I think that it gets the job done of, you know, making this animation work. Again, I think if this was modernized, he would maybe be spinning around a little bit more fluidly too. And they do cut back to this shot, which makes sense because obviously then they have this one from a little bit of a different angle. Um, I think that the Dokkan one though, interestingly enough, um, is actually like the same one as before. Yeah, it is virtually the same thing, right? Like you can see it's like this, right? And I guess it is a little bit of a different angle for this version, but it's it's the same thing. I will say, I do like how in the movie, they kind of have these occasional shots where it kind of gets blurry like this, right? Almost like the camera can't keep the focus. And they do try and emulate that with the Dokkan version by occasionally trying to make it a little bit brighter, which interestingly enough, in modern animations, we actually see blur sometimes. We see a little bit of that Gaussian blur at play. So it's interesting to see them try and sort of emulate that here. Obviously, again, this type of shot would not be included because, of course, you know, not only is this supposed to be like Gogeta winning, but the sprite would look really bad for that close-up too. Alright, so now we move on to the transformation. And again, I think these are absolutely the weakest parts of both of these units. However, even though these are so simplistic, and I mean, you know, it makes sense because of the time that they came out, I really like the references. Again, but this one, it is Gogeta cracking through the dimensions that, like in the Broly movie, they go to this weird purple dimension because they're just fighting so quickly and so fast and all that that they end up there, right? With basically just this asset of Gogeta, right, where he's kind of got his hands over his face like this. And then it transitions into... Um, which, by the way, gotta say, lo always love this cut-in. It's basically just the cut-in of this next asset here where he puts his hands down. At least for this one, right? With Broly, it was a little bit more obvious. For this one, they kind of mask it with this. It would have been, I think, a little bit better if maybe they would have transitioned the assets like here rather than here. Because, or, sorry, here? Yeah. Because it's a little bit more obvious, but it, nitpick, for sure. 
But yeah, obviously the purple background is a reference to the funny dimension that they're in. And then, I really like the yellow light that they actually do here. I think this looks a lot nicer than, you know, even if it is very similar to the one with the 12 key. I think it definitely does the job um, a lot better, if I may so, so say so myself. And of course, we have this nice reference to the, you know, black and white lines that go over Gogeta here. And I, I wow, actually, hold on, wait a minute. I didn't even realize that they had that for him in the movie, too. Literally, you can see, hold on, let's get to the frame right here. That's cool. And it's interesting, too, because obviously Broly's eyes are red in this scene, but Gogeta's eyes are kind of covered up, unless, I mean, I guess you consider it that. So it's cool that they didn't actually give him the red eyes for this, like they did for Go or, uh, Broly, rather. I keep getting the boys confused. <laughs> I'm getting tongue twisted, I'm sorry. So it's a, just a nice reference, right? And obviously it's a lot more accurate to the source material that they didn't give him the red eyes. And then, of course, you have the blue light envelop, and again, the cracked background, which is a reference to when they escape. And, of course, just kind of the PNG appear on the screen with a ni very nice blue aura. I gotta say, I really like the Super Saiyan blue aura, even though it is kind of just a little bit weird that it's just like sort of the shape around him cut out like a cookie cutter almost, right? Because this is basically just like the story asset with a little bit of animation on it. I still love the way that the aura looks like, the way that they kind of animated it, almost like steaming or smoking off of it, right? I think it looks really cool. Very, very nice. And then we move on to the, oh boy, this one is really, really cool. The transformation. So, interestingly enough with this one, right? First of all, this is another interesting little thing to note. First of all, they do the funny anime motion line thing here where he's, you know, zooming towards the screen. And they do a good job of kind of zooming in the PNG to give you that sort of perspective like he's moving forward quickly. However, what the interesting thing was to me about this always is that this is literally just, let me see if I can get a shot with a card art here. This is literally just a Super Saiyan Blue version of the card art, which I always thought was interesting that rather than making a new asset for this section, they just literally took this and just made it Super Saiyan Blue. And I believe that this asset is, uh, well, I mean, it has to be in the game because obviously, like, you know, it's right there. But I mean, like, I think a version of it that's not as motion line is also in the game. I'd have to take a look back at the files, to be honest with you. Um, just to double check, because I don't remember off the top of my cranium. But I'm pretty sure, because um, I know that there is, like, a base form version of the SSR of this character that was used in a story event. Funny enough, that was also used in the Hearts story event recently, too, for Super Dragon Ball Heroes. But I digress. I always just thought that this was kind of an interesting little thing that they did um, where they, you know, just made this guy basically a Super Saiyan Blue version of the Super Saiyan. And I remember thinking about this, too. Uh, when these guys came out, I was always like, wow, I always wanted to see that art, like, full, right? Because, obviously, it's such, like, a cool thing that you notice that. Um, it'd be cool to see, like, a full version, almost, like, of this card art. But, like, <laughs> where did it go? <laughs> this card art, there we go. But, like, a Super Saiyan Blue version of it that was maybe, like, more blue effects and the blue key and something like that. Because, obviously, you can see Blue Gogeta in the background of this card, right? But, anyway, um, still very, very cool even though it is very simple and they basically just kind of use the PNG moving forward, just like they did for Broly, right? I do like this zoom in shot. That is pretty cool, right? Obviously giving it a little bit more of a dynamic feel. And I like a lot that they kind of have it, you know, like back up a little bit and then bam, it gets really close in your face with him sort of zooming in close. This shot right here is so good. I wish it wasn't as blurry in the um, actual video, but very, it looks very, very good in game. You obviously have him get real close to the camera and then they cut to this shot here where Gogeta comes in. And I got to say, this is some really smart animation on their part. Look, <laughs> I always laugh every time I see this asset because it looks so funny. And this is actually how the asset looks in the files. Because it's not like they're using some like specific animation program or something like that to kind of like make it look so blurry or something like that right the asset is literally just blurred like they do animate assets to kind of change their shape a little bit in different dokkan animations you'll see that literally in a moment here but this is quite literally how the png works and i have to say for the time, this is such a creative way to make something like this work by instead of trying to figure out, oh, how do we animate this to be blurry and elongated, right, for these sort of, um, 
Oh, I forget the term. I've said it in a past animation uh, analysis video, and I can't remember it. So, someone in the comments always tells me, and I always forget, so I apologize. But it's basically when you make uh, an animation blurry on purpose to kind of give you the effect of fast movement. So, like, if you pause it, it's going to look super janky because it's not meant to be paused. It's meant to be an animation. It's meant to be moving, and it gives your eyes the sense of movement when you're watching it in motion. That might just be animation blur, motion blur, to be honest with you. But I think there's a specific term that I'm not thinking of. Anyway, someone in the comments will point it out to me. I really like the way that they do this is the point of the matter. Even though it is just a sliding PNG of this very goofy, blurry Gogeta. It's a very cool way that they do this. And even though he doesn't really have a lot of, like, transition between these shots, he's going so fast you don't really notice it. And obviously, you have him with his arm wound back. And this is exactly what I was talking about here. They do anime PNGs sometimes like this. You can see that even though this is basically like the standard way that it looks, they do have it pull back and stretch a tiny bit, right? To obviously kind of represent movement, I guess would be the best way to kind of put it, right? And so obviously he kind of just smacks down Broly with a quick PNG change, right? It seems like there isn't a exact reference to that in the movie because obviously the section that Jihad uses as like the closest thing that he could find for a reference uh, when this came out was obviously Gogeta flying through the funny purple dimension and then them two kind of clashing like this, right? So this definitely seems like something that Dokkan kind of ad-libbed a little bit. Maybe this was what they were referencing, but I think this is just kind of like the best thing that Jihad could find because obviously this is definitely a little bit different from the original source material there with him just kind of whipping Broly down towards the ground and then him, him hitting the ground below, excuse me. But it is a fantastic setup for, oh baby, oh baby, the, oh man. Listen, I know that there is basically like... <laughs> upgraded versions of this in Dokkan. Hey, I was just talking about the last video that I wanted to take a look at some um, upgraded versions of different animations in Dokkan. This is actually a perfect example. I did not even think about that. But this is such a classic animation to me that always gets me so nostalgic looking at it. Interesting that they put Gogeta's hair to the side rather than it having like the bang out in front. I never really noticed that before. That's quite interesting. Very, very cool way to do this. Even though, obviously, you know, it is basically just Gogeta's top half is just kind of a PNG moving. And I guess then this way, maybe they did this because they couldn't animate the bang moving like that. Because they definitely didn't have those little details of movement back then. Like, you can see the Obi belt, you know, as it's fluttering around here, you know, it's obviously very stable in the Dokkan version. Very interesting. Nonetheless, though, I really like this running cycle, right? I think that they do a very good job of animating this. Obviously, reference to the close-up shot here. Not as close-up, but still nice. Definitely a little bit more reminiscent of, like, where he is here in the frame. But with the running, they just kind of have the legs sort of move, like, with between a couple of poses. But I think there's enough in there to kind of make it look like fluid running, if I do say so myself. And the key blasts are a fantastic reference to the original material as well. I think that even though it isn't exact, it's definitely a very good representation of it. It's very, very nice, if I do say so myself. I always thought that this shot was pretty good, too. It is a bit of a shame that we don't get this exactly with Gogeta kind of running into the explosion effect, because I always really loved this scene in the Broly movie. Ironically enough, it's kind of like a little bit of a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not epitome, but it's almost like kind of sharing a similarity a parallel, if you will, with the shot of Broly firing the mouth beam, and you're kind of looking from under in between his legs, right? It kind of reminds me of that shot. It's almost like Gogeta's version of that shot. But they try and kind of reference it with this, right? Where it's not exactly from behind. I definitely prefer the angle from the movie, but obviously with the Dokkan version, I don't think that they had the tech to do something like this just yet, right? They definitely were a little bit, you know, like, behind, or, you know, when I say that, like, Obviously, because I'm not a member of Akatsuki, unfortunately, <laughs> or the Naruto version, just to put that out there. But obviously, when I say that, you know, it's either, you know, they didn't have the tech, they didn't have the know-how, all of the above, you know, or, you know, just not enough experience to do something like that. Because obviously, I'm not on the dev team, you know, I can't tell you for sure, but it's just my best educated guess, right? And I would probably say it's all three of those things. But this is a nice little reference to this scene. 
Obviously, the way they do this is just kind of have a PNG of Gogeta bounce up and down while having these little bit of the Key Blast sort of like flicker around, which is a nice little reference to this. And some cool perspective, I will say. Like, definitely, even though you can construct this and see how kind of simple this animation is, they do a good job of giving you some really good force perspective. Like, you feel like Gogeta is approaching too closer to the explosion, right? He is getting closer, so... He is the storm that is approaching, <laughs> you know, so I think they do a good job with the perspective in that shot. And it's interesting, too, because then you can see that whole asset that was just bouncing is literally just this one that they kind of have just sort of float up towards the sky. Interestingly enough, they do have the beams move the entire time, which is just how it is in the rolling movie, too, which is pretty cool. And obviously, as he jumps into the explosion, um, they do have a quick cut, which interestingly enough, this angle is basically one to one with the movie, to be honest with you. Um, and I gotta say, even though it isn't exactly, wow, this is actually really interesting that they, we'll talk about the spin in a second. So with this, right, they have Gogeta land like this, right? And then obviously they cut to this shot where he's landing down. But interestingly enough, in the Dokkan version, they actually kind of have it where you're looking from the back of Gogeta instead, rather than getting that in-between shot where you're looking at Broly standing there. I think that's a very interesting um, sort of liberty that Dokkan took, but I quite like that, to be honest with you. Now, the spin, I gotta say, right, even though if we take a look at this closely... It is absolutely just a couple of poses that are being faded in between. You can literally see the ghost of the next pose, right, as it gets into the next shot that they want to do, right? There you can see the sort of ghost effect of it. A little bit of a blurred asset here to kind of represent the spin, and then a little bit of a more ghost and some spinning there to kind of transition into the next asset. Again, some very blurry stuff up here, and it really helps with this shot that it's so far away that it's hard to tell that these type of things are happening. Right. I think that's definitely an advantage that they have for this. But again, they use a little bit of more blurry assets for the spin for this. And you finally have Gogeta come down, right, where they actually have him properly pretty much just move down. They use a definitely a little bit of blur there to kind of make your eyes be tricked that he's actually flipping down like that. But my whole point of talking about this section in such depth is I want to take a look at it in the full time speed, right? Obviously, the Broly movie version is so fluid, right? But for the time for Dokkan, this is so impressive. And it looks quite fluid, if I do say so myself, right? They do a very good job of using all of the, you know, pieces of this to their advantage. The fact that it's far away, using some blurry assets, right? Even the little bit of the fading and the way that they have it move to give you a very nice effect of Gogeta actually flipping around. I think for the time, that is pretty impressive, if I do say so myself. I quite like that shot a lot. I was very impressed when I saw that for the first time. So then we have Gogeta land, and you do cut to this shot here, where obviously it is the ground. And then, right, you have Gogeta come into the frame. And even though Gogeta definitely doesn't look the best here, right, like the updated version of this essentially, which is basically just like the tech gods, Definitely is a better looking version of this. However, I think the key looks really good here. They definitely nailed the way that it looks, I think. And for the time, the background perspective is not only very accurate to the movie, but just super impressive with the way that they make you feel like the background is actually spinning behind Gogeta, despite this asset, you know, never really turning until obviously here where they have a huge fade when he throws it forward, you know, to then whip the key blast as it kind of moves. And again, super crazy attention to detail on Akatsuki's part with getting those very dynamic movements of the key, which is something that I absolutely adore about the Broly movie. Um, very, very cool. Another fade here, right? Again, I feel like if this was a modern animation, you wouldn't be seeing as much of this, but you do have him then wind up, which is basically like this shot, right? With him throwing it forward. Again, a little bit ad-lib from the poses that he takes in the movie, but still a very good representation of the scene overall. And this shot is really cool. Basically one-to-one, -to, -one, to be honest with you, even though it's a little bit older looking, they still do a fantastic job of animating those key blasts and the way that it sort of flies towards. Again, this is another shot that definitely looks like he is flying towards a spot. It's that forced perspective that they're very good at. And this is so impressive to me, to be honest with you. 
here, again, right, not only is this shot very accurate, obviously it's sort of the implication that the sprite is there because, you know, they don't really have a good way to kind of pose it with that. And I don't know if back then they had as much of, like, the skills to kind of make it look like it was going into the sprite rather than just being layered on top of it. But look at this, bro! These frames are, like, one-to-one, -one, right? Obviously, we're kind of having them follow up each other here, but, like, look at this! That's crazy attention to detail! And then you obviously have this shot, right? Which leads into this. And, like, that's just the same thing! <laughs> That is so impressive for the time period that this came out. Again, with the, you know, shots there, right? Looks good. Even the key blast making contact and the way that it makes contact with this, right? The, unfortunately, you kind of don't get this where it sort of explodes against the smoke, uh, which is a bit of a shame. But still, even with these, right? These impact frames, they look so good. And the explosion effect coming off looks fantastic in the Dokkan version too, right? Definitely not as bright as the movie, but I still think it's very, very nice to look at, too. And for this one, now, obviously, we have the card art pop up on the screen. And then, oh, man, I remember popping off when I saw this. This is so cool seeing this for the first time. With the way that they have the Stardust form into the Stardust Breaker in the Dokkan version... Holy cow, I was so impressed with that if I do say so myself, right? Look at the way that it forms in the Broly version real quick, right? With the key blast sort of coming together and flowing those hands. Obviously the key, or the uh, sparkles I guess I should say in this case, are very dynamic in the way that they sort of like flow in all these different angles into it. And even though you don't get necessarily those angles where it's kind of just like this spin into it, Wow, this is such a great representation. Ironically enough, in the Dokkan version, it almost kind of looks like the sparkles are coming out of the key um, rather than with the movie version. It kind of looks like they go into the... I guess they do kind of look like they're coming off of it. But yeah, a very good representation of this scene. Absolutely, right? Such a good recreation of this scene. 100%, right? And then, of course, we get to the actual throw, which, of course considering how old this is, does leave a lot to be desired. However, for back in the day, I do think that this is pretty cool. And they kind of can't use the same thing what they did with Broly, where how he kind of swipes his hand towards the screen to kind of mask the sort of rapid pose changes for this. But I still think it looks really good. Obviously, this asset of Gogeta is also very iconic because of the whole V-Jump debacle where this was shown as, like, the card art rather than the actual card art that we got. But this is pretty cool. Obviously, Gogeta, I like the perspective that they take here, right? They kind of move the PNG back a little bit and have it sort of cocked towards the camera before they do the fade to then have this very cool close-up with a little bit of shaking on the camera to then transition into this where interestingly enough right they keep his face the same but they have his arm and his obi belt nope his obi belt doesn't change the arm adjusts a little bit with the key kind of following suit and then obviously you have a very quick asset change here which is basically one frame of the fade to then him throwing it and i do like the way that they animated the stardust breaker here right obviously animating it like the movie where it kind of turns into a little bit of an oval and they even nail the cool spin, right? In the Broly movie version, when it spins into the explosion, right? It goes whoop and kind of has that really cool, almost like an animated baseball, right? Where it kind of like morphs and spins like this, right? Almost looks like a flame flying in. The Dokkan version nails that for sure. I think that they absolutely do it fantastic in the Dokkan version, right? You can literally see basically the same effect, albeit they kind of mask it a little bit while having a little bit of ghosting off of it. It still looks good, and I still think that it's a good representation of the original. And they have the smoke billow up right before the explosion, right? Which is just like the movie version, and these really cool smoke effects here, right? With the explosion of the blue key kind of flaring up, just like they do in the movie, and they even include the sparkles, right? And you even have the impact frames. And this shot I love, right? Even though we obviously got this shot of Gogeta in the more modern version of this super attack. Man, this is really, really cool in the final basically KO screen that they have where they have Gogeta sort of just looking at the explosion. Oh, so cool, dude. The explosion not only looks fantastic, but I love the liberty that Dokkan took for this because even though this explosion is cool in the Broly movie version, 
I don't know if they necessarily like had the means to animate this at that time, right? So including this as just kind of a little thing where that's almost like what takes place right before, you know, he kind of stances up in that close-up shot is just such a cool inclusion for the Dokkan version. I really, really like this. And even though this is just a PNG, right, it looks fantastic. And I really like that they have the lighting look pretty accurate too, where it really looks like the light is shining on the front of Gogeta and there's a shadow here. Even the perspective of this shot is so cool because you can see the shadow coming off of Gogeta's feet and it really makes you feel like that this is, you know, you're looking from behind him from a bit of a distance. Very, very cool stuff, if I do say so myself. I really like this animation. I think, for me personally, Broly's animation may be a little bit more of the one that kind of stands the test of time, if I may be so bold. However, I do still really like this one. Obviously, not only is it quite nostalgic for me, but I think that there are a lot of cool things that they did for the time, and... For this one especially, I'm really impressed with the key blast effects and the different explosions and whatnot. And the basically just making it as movie accurate as they could with the more limited resources that they had at the time, I just think is super impressive. And I like this guy. I definitely like his animations quite a bit if I do say so myself. I am very excited to get this man all easy aid. Obviously, we have been looking forward to this unit getting an easy A for a very, very long time now. But let me know what you think of Gogeta's animations in the comments section below. I will see you in the next animation analysis video. Dokonasits out. Peace.